darkness sinks across the desert. Creatures that survive the heat of the day below ground begin to stir. The tiny desert night lizard lives under and around the fallen branches and trunks of the Joshua tree. In summer, it emerges after dark to feed on termites and other tiny insects. They have to be tiny. The lizard is barely two inches long. This night snake is only 18 inches nose to tail, but it's big enough to feed on the little night lizards. The night snake is mildly venomous, which helps to slow the struggles of its prey. It gulps down the lizard in minutes. <whistles> Reptiles are not alone on the nighttime desert floor. This scorpion has whiled away the searing heat of the day under rocks or hidden in a cool burrow. But darkness is no protection against those unlikely predators who may want to eat a scorpion. The pallid bat has sensitive hearing. It can detect the whisper of the scorpion's tiny footsteps on the sand. The scorpion attempts to sting the bat. Often the bat bites the sting clean off. This time, it flutters back to its roost with the living scorpion clinging to its wing. The night snake continues to inch across the desert sand. This time it ends up with just a snack. The lizard's tail is designed to break off easily. The snake swallows the still wriggling tail while the lizard flees and survives. Specialized muscles quickly contract to prevent blood loss. In a few months, it will grow a new tail. As dawn creeps across the Mojave, hunting and feeding intensify. Soon the rising temperatures will make life in the open unbearable for most. A coyote prowls the desert, an opportunistic hunter ready to pounce on any small animal. It may have only a scant three hours in the cool of the morning to range the rocks looking for food. Not all animals are easy prey for the coyote. This desert tortoise, heaving itself from its burrow into the morning, is a perfectly adapted desert inhabitant. As big as a motorcycle helmet, the adult tortoise can protect itself by retreating beneath its armoured plating. The tortoise only appears above ground for an hour or two each day, usually in the cool of the early morning. It's a vegetarian that will eat almost any plant, fresh or dry. It rarely wanders far from its burrow and much of its time is spent feeding. During hard times, tortoises fast for months, surviving on stores of water and fat within their bodies. Tortoises are sometimes as old as they look, living for over 70 years. The opposite of the slow tortoise is the swift roadrunner. During the chilly desert nights, the roadrunner's temperature drops by several degrees to conserve vital energy. As the sun rises, the roadrunner basks like a reptile to regain lost heat without drawing on its stores of body fat. It arches its wings forward to expose a black downy patch on its back. The patch absorbs heat quickly and speeds up the warming of its muscles. As a mainly ground living bird, the roadrunner needs speed to avoid danger. But unlike in cartoons, coyotes seldom chase roadrunners. 
Coyotes are too smart to waste precious energy on a bird whose top ground speed is 20 miles an hour. The roadrunner uses its speed and agility to snatch up small prey. Patrolling its territory, the roadrunner flicks its tail to expose a bright black and white pattern. This signaling may confuse possible predators and also alerts other roadrunners. These birds are highly territorial and methodically patrol the boundaries of their home ground. When challenged, they can defend it vigorously. Roadrunners may be too fast for coyotes, but another ground-living bird, Gamble's quail, is easier prey. The quail bustle about on the ground, lacking the roadrunner's spurt of speed to keep them safe from the jaws of the ever-hungry coyote. Tilt, the roadrunner is even able to catch one of the swiftest of lizards, a desert whiptail, in what looks like a series of controlled crashes. It's easy to see why coyotes just don't bother. The roadrunner is one of the desert's success stories. It's a type of cuckoo, although unlike its more familiar relatives, it does raise its own chicks. Young chicks are very quiet. They don't want to reveal their location to predators. Even within the spiny protection of the Choya, the chicks are vulnerable to marauding coyotes. But not all the desert's inhabitants have to be so concerned about making a noise. Coyotes howl, tortoises bang against each other. Male desert tortoises fight to establish their position in a pecking order. A rival male provokes noisy, violent behavior, totally out of character with the usual passive progression from plant to plant. He butts his rival in an attempt to establish his dominance, and the nods seem to mean he is definitely serious about it. He attempts to bite his opponent, but tortoises rarely draw blood. One tortoise may flip his rival onto his back, but then may inadvertently help him to regain his feet by repeated ramming with his shell. If the tortoises are equally matched, these encounters can go on for an hour. But in this contest, it's not long before the smaller tortoise gets the message and retreats with as much speed and dignity as his shape and weight will allow. In fact, it's time for both to head for cover. The sun is high and the temperature rising. It won't be long before the ground is too hot to touch, even for those scaly feet. <laughs> 